Well, one of the pillars of piety we engage in during the season of Lent is that of prayer. We strive to grow in prayer as we continue through this holy season. But when we see in the Gospel reading for the Tuesday of the first week of Lent, Jesus gives a very particular instruction on how we are to go about praying. Jesus says, when you pray, do not babble like the pagans do, who think they will be heard because of the sheer multiplication of words. They think they'll be heard because of their many words. And he goes on to say, do not be like them. And that's an interesting instruction until you consider that, yes, we as human beings have a penchant to, in our prayer, add on to the things that we say, add to the, to the words and the extra prayers we like to say. And during the season of Lent, it's, it's, a, it's important to consideration to look at how we pray and the disposition in which we pray. Jesus doesn't want us to rattle on in words, but he wants us to bring a true substance and sincerity to the prayers that we engage in. Uh, for example, we have a very popular prayer and devotion, the rosary. But how many Hail Marys do we actually pray in the rosary? How many Our Fathers? How many Glory Bees? On the one hand, the rosary would consider a multiplication of words. Until you consider that in the midst of praying the rosary, in the midst of the verbal part of that prayer, we have the different mysteries that we meditate on internally, mentally, as we recite the different prayers of the rosary. So it's not just a multiplication of words, but it, in many ways it's a timed meditation without the stopwatch. The timing is in the beads and the Hail Marys. And when we come to the end of that decade, we can feel that chain. We know we've come to the end of that meditation of a particular mystery. But even then, at the end of the rosary, I've seen even myself, as well as other rosary groups, uh, how uh, we have a penchant to add other prayers at the end of the rosary, the prayer to St. Michael, uh, the Memorare, the prayer of St. Francis, and so on. And so we do have a pension to add on prayers, wanting to get those prayers in, to make sure we say them, hoping for a particular result or dis spiritual disposition because we've said them. And even, you know, as a priest, I've had people come up to me and say that they are uh, distressed because they feel distracted in their prayer. They have other concerns uh, in their lives, in their families, in their work um, that preoccupy their mind as they are trying to pray. And sometimes it's hard for them to focus on praying. And so during the season of Lent, sometimes I will ask them, uh, what prayer do you usually engage in? Uh, and more often than not, they'll say they pray the rosary. And so I'll ask them, well, do you pray the Fatima prayer? And they will usually say, yes, they include the Fatima prayer at the end of each decade after the glory be. And so I would suggest in light of the fact that we give up certain things for Lent, have we ever considered up giving up a certain prayer? in favor of other forms of prayer that we could try, so as to try something new and keep our, uh, our prayer life a little bit alive, to spice up our prayer life. And so I'll often suggest, have you ever considered giving up the Fatima prayer when you pray the rosary? It might be a little harder than we would consider because, think about it, if the rosary or any prayer we engage in is a matter of habit, sometimes we do it without thinking and we just launch right into the next prayer without giving it too much thought, without really paying attention to what we're doing. And if we have to really concentrate on excluding a prayer, we invariably find ourselves focusing a little more on the prayers of the rosary that we're engaging in, the mysteries that we are meditating on, so that we can remember to exclude that prayer. It's not just saying it's a bad prayer and we should not pray it. I'm not saying that. But it becomes a habit for us to include these prayers, and when we decide to give it up, just as a matter of exercise, we find ourselves focusing a little more deeply on the prayer. Or I might suggest that uh, one give up the rosary for Lent and try a new form of prayer, a different form of prayer, whether it's uh, reading a passage of scripture or um, uh, the chaplet of divine mercy, uh, praying the Psalms or praying the liturgy of the hours, the breviary, which we priests are obliged to pray on a daily basis, uh, to try new forms of prayer. And then when Easter is done, we take back the prayer, say the rosary that we've given up for Lent, and we pray the rosary again, perhaps to the inclusion of this new form of prayer that we have engaged in during Lent. And so the idea is to grow in our prayer, not to become stagnant so that's a matter of habit in which we can be easily distracted, but to engage in exercises so that we may grow. And these may not be maybe easy because we are creatures of habit, but during the season of Lent, let's make it a goal that we grow in prayer by trying something new, perhaps excluding a prayer that we regularly include in our regular uh, practices of prayer to help us concentrate more, meditate more deeply, 
but especially to grow in listening to God in our prayer. And one suggestion I might uh, add is to just spend some time not reciting anything, not praying any prayer, but simply being in the presence of God in silence. And in this era of, of cell phones and iPhones, most of them have the function on the phone of a timer. And if we just set 10 minutes aside to begin with, 10 minutes in which we just simply put the timer away and we stand in the presence or sit in the presence of the crucifix or the, an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary, or if we go into our local church and simply sit in the presence of of God in the Eucharist and we don't worry about checking our watch and we don't worry about the time we just set the timer and we lose ourselves in the timelessness of prayer then we are not simply rattling off a multiplication of words but we are simply sitting meditating and being attentive to how God might speak to us inside and we are not simply rattling off a multiplication of words but we are in fact listening so let this be a time of growth in prayer in which we deepen our prayer, deepen the substance of our prayer, and not simply rattle off words, but put ourselves in a disposition where we, in prayer, are in fact listening to God speaking to us.